How many of you have seen or heard of the movie The Truman Show? Oh, a lot of you. Okay, awesome. Well, for those of you who aren't too familiar with the film, it basically tells the story of Truman. He's the star of his own reality TV series, and it airs live. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, it airs live to the entire world. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. Um, the thing is, though, he's not even actually aware of this happening to him. So unbeknownst to him, his entire world is just a film set. His loved ones are just cast members of the show. And I think most disturbingly, everybody in the world is tuned in, obsessively watching, predicting, anticipating his every single move. I should just stuck with like super bad or something that night because I wasn't expecting this Jim Carrey family flick to eventually provoke this kind of distressing thought in my head. See, this movie from 23 years ago essentially predicted the future. Today, we're all watching our own mini Truman shows. Just like the creepy audience members, we too are constantly consuming not just one, but many different lives on display. Like, we're mesmerized in whatever otherwise mundane thing that somebody else is doing, as long as we get our own little VIP digital spot on their shoulder, right? And this happens not only on reality TV like Truman, but more relevantly, on social media. But with the social media, doesn't it go both ways? I mean, I have my own platform, I have my group of followers and an audience, if you will, and I get to post moments about my life whenever I want to, as often as I please. So in a way, I am both Truman and his audience at the exact same time. It might sound weird in these terms, but I don't think any of it's actually that foreign to us. Because what it ultimately boils down to is this. We stalk other people, and other people stalk us back. We're the audience, we're Truman. It's simple, and we don't think twice about it. But what if I told you there's actually one more thing we have in common with The Truman Show? Truman was actually living inside of a lie. His whole reality TV show, there wasn't actually a single aspect of truth in the whole thing, because it was all scripted for him. Everything with which he was able to interact, everything that happened to him was put there deliberately by the director of the show. Because the show wasn't about him, it wasn't about his reality. It was about the audience and what they wanted to see of him. So these two things, yeah, we can see how that's relevant to us today, but this, how in the world is that at all relevant to what we're doing? Well, I'm not trying to say we're all being manipulated by some evil genius director, but I do want to show you how this very obsession with mutual 24-hour surveillance is what brings about a fake reality for ourselves, too, one that's not so different from that of Truman's. How? Well, let me ask you first a question. How many of you have social media? Raise your hand if you have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and that's almost all of you, right? Now, raise your hand if on those platforms you purposefully post boring things. <laughs> and that's none of you, right? I'm, I'm with you on that one, I, I hope. I mean, we're not interested in things that aren't interesting to us, and we're social creatures anyway, right? We desire, we crave a kind of social interest from those around us. So why post anything that doesn't make you look at least good? If anything, you'd want to make yourself look better, right? And so every time we hit upload, we're really only posting curated content that's designed to impress. We leave behind anything that could be even remotely considered uninteresting. You know when you take like a million pictures of yourself and you choose the one where the lighting hits perfectly and your jawline looks extra sharp? And that's the one you post, right? We only post the best of the best when we're living our best lives, doing our best, feeling our best, looking our best, and then suddenly, through this meticulous process of picking out perfection to present as truth, I now have two lives for which I am responsible. One is the real one, with its highs, but also its fair share of lows and everything in between. And then I have this good parts-only enhanced version of it 
that others perceive as truth, that my audience understands of, as what my life is really like. So what I'm basically doing is I'm creating an augmented version of myself, a puppet, if you will, of who I want to be seen as rather than who I really am. So now there's a disconnect, right? As the life I put forth continuously and continuously outperforms the way my real life is. And well, now I need to keep up, right? I can't only post, for instance, like flawless photos of my face and then not actually look the part in real life. And then what if somebody meets my social media before meeting me? I mean, I need to keep up. I need to live up to what they think of me. So now I'm going to go to that party, but I'm going not for my friends, not for the fun, but for the photos I can post. Or, you know, potentially post, if I look good enough, that is. This is where the tide really turns. Social media isn't about posting moments from your life anymore, but your life is about living up to those moments you post about on social media. Think about this compounded by the billions of people online today. If we're all strategically making ourselves look a lot better than we really are, if we're all putting the best versions of ourselves out there for others to judge, what even is social media at this point if not just this massive web of projected desires and, and selective reporting? A scroll through Instagram is really just a scroll through an actual augmented reality. It's like a dystopian dream world where everybody exists to their desired degree of perfection. And when I scroll through, I don't think that far, right? I just take it in as the truth that was, as, what, as what people are really living like. So now I can't tell real from fake. I can't tell what's true and possible as opposed to digital or falsifiable. And as I conflate my two realities, well, real reality is just disappointing. I find that the world and its colors are nowhere near as vibrant as I thought they were, or that girl who always seems to have it together, who's always smiling and laughing online, is actually going through a lot right now. Good moments feel half as good, because my expectations are this high now. And bad moments feel twice as bad, because I don't see that online. We're losing our grasp on reality, and we're losing interest in it too, along the way. But it doesn't end here. I think the true and the, the ultimate impact of, of it all, of this digital derealization, is what comes after. And that's the threat it poses to our very conception of happiness, even purpose, for some of us. Let's go back to that original thing we had in common with the world of The Truman Show, right? We stalk other people, other people stalk us back. We're the audience, and we're Truman. It's like a cycle, kind of. But let's actually dissect it. I stalk you, and you look perfect, right? You look awesome. And that makes me feel pretty darn insecure. And so to compensate for that, I'm going to make myself look even better, right? I might not actually be that way. I might not actually live that way. But hey, at least I can make it seem like I am. And that's actually the version of me that you see. And so you go through the exact same course of emotions that I just went through, leading you to post this augmented puppet of yourself as well. But that's actually the version of you that I see. And so now it's my turn to look better, right? To, to look better than you. And now you see that, and you look better. And now it's me, and you, and me, and you, and me, and you, and the bar of personal fulfillment only gets higher and higher in this cycle that consumes, compares, and covets to achieve an illusion of personal fulfillment. And we can never reach it. This is what I take to be the ultimate and most imperative consequence of this whole thing, going from mutual stalking to comparison and insecurity to our augmented realities and then the digital derealization that ensues. It's the fact that insofar as I am participating in this cycle, I will never be satisfied with who I am and what I have. 
At no point in time can I actually comfortably think about my life on its own, not in relation to anybody else's, and say, I'm satisfied. I'm lucky, I'm grateful, because other people will always seem to have it better than me. And how can I be at ease with myself when I know there's always more to covet? And let's go back to our friend Truman again. While his whole life right, was essentially crafted for the audience, Ours is crafted for our audience, too. We have this new urge to share everything we do to prove a point. We put our lives on display to say, look, I'm doing this thing, so I must be cool and popular and happy. Because other people thinking we're cool and popular and happy is a lot more important to us than actually feeling that way. Because the question we ask ourselves is, well, what's the point if nobody else knows? This for the audience mentality, this desire for external approval rather than internal appreciation, is what brings about this life of falsity for ourselves. And while Truman's was, was deliberately scripted for him, and he had no idea about it, we script our own. We are the evil genius director, entrapping ourselves in this life of falsity, forcing ourselves to abide by these artificial laws that dictate what's cool, what's trendy, what's enough, and what isn't. But this cycle, it's not unbreakable. Once you direct that audience attention inward, towards yourself and your own needs instead of towards other Trumans, you realize the value of not just being yourself, but being yourself for yourself. You realize that who you are isn't what other people think you are, and who you should be is not determined by what others like best. If you paid as much attention to your real life, your real world, yourself, as you did to maintaining your fake one or looking at other people's, you would notice that you can climb out of that perfection-obsessed audience and step down from being this seemingly flawless Truman who really only lives to please others. You would notice what you have, this raw beauty in life that you hadn't noticed before. You would realize that happiness is something that's real and that lasts, and it starts with a gratitude for what you have that's deep enough to trump the insecurity you feel for what you don't. Because life isn't flawless, right? But it doesn't need to be in order to be fulfilling, nor does it need the seal of approval from anybody aside from yourself. At the end of the movie, Truman figures it out, and he escapes from his weird TV show life predicament. <laughs> in appreciating the beauty of an imperfectly true life, and in approaching it with the same curiosity we have for other people, we can do the same. Thank you.